Okay, we've reached the last video in our series of short videos focusing on aggregate demand. We've looked at consumption and investment and savings and government spending. Let's just spend a few minutes thinking about net exports and aggregate demand. So what are exports? Well, exports or exporting is the act of selling a good or a service to another country. Typically, it's not, it's not countries that trade, it's businesses that export products all around the world. And the income, the revenue, the money from producing and then exporting is treated as an injection into the circular flow of income and also obviously an injection into the formula for aggregate demand, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now, crucial to the story here is the concept of the trade balance. The trade balance, and you have to get the definition precise here. A lot of students just don't quite get this accurately enough. The trade balance is the difference between the value of the goods and services we export and the value of the products that we import. It's not the quantity, it's the value. And when the value of exports is greater than the value of imports, we have a trade surplus. That's a net injection of demand into the economy. When the value of imports is bigger than the value of exports, the trade balance is in deficit. We say there's a net trade deficit, and that's a negative for aggregate demand. So the trade balance is the difference between the value of exports and imports. The balance is sometimes referred to as net exports. What's the situation uh, with regard to the UK economy? Do we run a trade deficit or do we run a trade surplus? Well, here's the data for the UK. Annual figures in billions of pounds. The blue line is our exports. That's been going up each year, most years. Uh, the orange line is imports. You can see that the value of imports of goods are greater than the value of exports, meaning that if I put the balance in here, the trade balance, that we have a deficit. So if just in terms of goods, things like washing machines, cars, computers, LCD screens, smartphones, etc., oil and gas, food and drink, uh, the UK economy ran a trade deficit in goods of £131 billion in 2019. We exported over £370 billion worth of goods, but we imported over £500 billion. However, we also trade services, tourism, hospitality, all that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, financial services, business services, insurance, creative services. Here, notice the, the line for exports is above the line for imports, both rising. Uh, and in 2019, the UK economy ran a trade surplus of 100, pretty much 100 billion pounds. So our service exports we're bigger than our imports of services. The UK economy has a strong comparative advantage in many services. Now, if we add the two together and express the data as a percentage of GDP, the blue line here shows the deficit in goods. The orange line shows the surplus in services. Not easy to say. The grey line shows the balance. And overall, the UK economy does run a trade deficit. We import more than we export, and that deficit was 31 billion in 2019. Many factors affect our exports, the relative price of our goods compared to competitors in Germany, United States, Japan, and other countries. So our relative prices make a difference. The exchange rate is also quite important. Typically, for example, a strong pound against the dollar, against the euro, that makes our exports more expensive overseas and makes imports coming into the UK makes them cheaper. So that can affect the export sector. Uh, the strength of demand in our major market affects our exports. So if we export, for example, 10% of our exports to the United States, if the USA is in recession, it's much harder to export to the United States. It may be difficult to find new markets. And crucially, non-price demand factors. How good, for example, is the, the quality of design and branding and performance and innovation. These things oftentimes are really crucial in driving demand. Trade frictions can affect our exports. Trade barriers, uh, including things like tariffs and quotas. So if we think about 2021, uh, will the UK exporters suffer if the UK doesn't manage to reach a trade agreement with the European Union, which is our biggest 
single export market. In the long run, the biggest single factor affecting exports is whether we have enough of a wide base of businesses willing and able to compete in, in the global markets and sell their goods and services sell their goods and services successfully overseas. So oftentimes the startups of today become the big exporting businesses of the future. So having that wealth and that energy and investment in enterprise and new businesses is often very important in driving the long term performance of our exports. So we've come to the end of quite a long series of videos on aggregate demand. I hope you found it useful. Quick recap, what is the formula for calculating aggregate demand? It's C plus I plus G plus X minus M. C plus I plus G is domestic demand. X minus M is net exports. We've just covered that in this video. If you really understand your aggregate demand, you'll do extremely well in any macroeconomics question. OK, there we go. I hope you found uh, this series of videos uh, useful. There'll be another playlist focusing on aggregate supply on our YouTube channel.